<laughs> da na 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 na. Welcome to the Robert Ford Show, and who's he? So who is he? Who is he? Oh gosh. I wish all of you in your life. That, that's why I have my Mr. Rogers uh, outfit on today. Um, my Mr. Uh, we'll, we'll do without the hat, maybe. Well, I don't know. I like the hat. So. Mr. Rogers, he runs a, a neighborhood, <laughs> and I wish, truly, that all of you in your lives have as good a friend, artistic companion, and just general, all-around smart and funny guy fall into your life as I did when I met this guy here. So when last we left the Robert Ford Show, <coughs> he had driven to, as it turns out, Knoxville, Tennessee, in his pink 54 Lincoln Capri, and he parked it outside the uh, Sigma Nu fraternity house at the university down there in Knoxville, walked up the steps, sound effects please, walked up the steps, knocked on the door, and some, you know, young man, who probably wasn't much younger or older than me, because I still was only about 19, 20, maybe I pushing a little bit, 21, maybe by then, uh, answers the door. And I hold up the dulcimer and I say, you know what this is? He goes, well, what's a dulcimer? <laughs> and I say, perfect. You wouldn't happen to know where they play these things around here, would you? And he said, well, there's a bluegrass festival over in Union Grove, North Carolina next, next weekend. I suspect there'll be some over there. And I said, thank you. <laughs> and put my dulcimer bam, 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 down the steps. Okay, and um, got back in my pink 54 Lincoln Capri. Well, my father used to say to me, Bobby, 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 would you please knock off the sound effects? I was always, you know, stuff was always going on in my head. So I got the map out, drove to Union Grove, North Carolina. That wasn't that far, I could forget anymore, but I probably got there in less than a half a day. And um, the way festivals were set up in those days, if you paid your money, they let you in. And then, if you played on stage later on that, uh, during the festival, they gave you your money back. And that's what kept the music performers, uh, you know, sort of going and keeping the, the regular crowd. So, and now I, bear with me on this one, bear with me, because this, this is my, my memory, and uh, my wife tells me all the time, my wife Jeanette, she says, you know, we make up our own myths, we live our own mythologies, but my mythology is the following, and uh, I can, I'll swear on a stack of in search of the wild dulcimers that uh, this is what happened. So I paid my 10, 12 bucks, I got into the festival, and then it was kind of this bumpy field, and there wasn't much happening, and, and and I it was kind of getting near dusk, and I kind of uh, 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 drove over the field, parked the Lincoln, and looked around. Well, I guess this is it. And I crawled in the back, and I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning, and there were 40,000 people there. <laughs> there was that. They just <clears throat> showed up. Now, Union Grove at that time had a population of 18, you know, and it, but the 44th annual, it had been going on all those years, and everybody came, and they came with their banjos, and they came with their fiddles, and they came with their guitars, and they came with everything except dulcimers. I didn't see a whole lot of dulcimers, but you can imagine crawling out of this pink Lincoln Capri with uh, your, your long hair, and you're looking around and like, oh my good golly, what's happening here? And the way bluegrass festivals work is that People stand around in like little clumps. You know, once again, please, 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 you have to understand that I'm filtering this, you know, through my Northwest upbringing and, and strange as it sounds, this is how it appeared. People would stand in clumps of usually five people. And that five people was consisted of a Martin guitar. Not any other guitar, a Martin guitar, usually a D28, sometimes a D35, which had just come onto the market a Gibson master tone banjo, a, uh, a Gibson mandolin. Now the Gibson mandolin is a, not the A model of mandolin, not, not, the, uh, not, the, not the round back kind and certainly not the uh, pear shaped kind, but the one that has a little the F hole up here and there's lots of models of them. 
So you've got the uh, the Martin guitar, the Gibson Massatone banjo. You've got the uh, uh, um, uh, the Gibson uh, mandolin, and you have a, a bass player usually. No, we're talking about electric here, but and then you've got a fiddler. You know, and they play. And that's, we've added over the years, and we assume some pedal steel and, or, or some dobros or you know, other instruments have come into it, maybe a second guitar, but that was really the, the sort of the makeup. And this is 1971, Easter Sunday in Union Grove, North Carolina. And so I thought, uh oh, because it's bluegrass. Now, I, can, I was fast enough, I could play fast enough, but I didn't know any of those tunes. And so what I started to do was I knew one tune. I knew Wildwood Flower. And I walked around, since I played my dulcimer with a strap over the top, and by then I had commissioned another instrument, so it was a big fat, I'll try to bring it in, it was a big fat rosewood dulcimer that had double bouts and a standing bridge, and it was loud! And I could ring it, ring it, ring it, get in there and be just as loud as a Gibson Massatone banjo. And I went around the festival, and sooner or later, if you stood outside of that, uh, that group, sooner or later, Wildwood Flower would come up, and then I'd play it at their speed. And then I'd find another group that was playing slightly faster, and I played it at their speed, and so on and so forth, until I got better and better at... Something like that. So, what happens next when you stay tuned to the Robert Force show and thanks for tuning in. <laughs>